In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about the IS curve. And the IS curve is a curve that displays a negative relationship between real expenditure and the interest rate. The IS curve is half of the ISLM model. The ISLM model is a model of expenditure where we get an equilibrium real interest rate and an equilibrium real expenditure or real GDP. And we derive the IS curve from the goods market. The LM curve, the other half of this model, is derived from the money market. But today, we are going to talk about just IS. So let's derive the IS curve. We start with expenditures. Aggregate expenditures, or GDP as expenditures, we've got consumption plus investment, firm spending on capital goods and equipment and inventory, government purchases, and net exports. And in this model, we're going to break net exports into exports and imports. And you'll see why in a minute. Let's start with consumption. Consumption is our biggest expenditure category in the United States. And the amount that households consume in any given period depends on their expectations or your expectation of future income. If you're feeling upbeat and positive and you think your income prospects are good, you're going to go shopping today and spend more. And if you're pessimistic, you might spend less. Wealth. How is your stock portfolio? How is your home equity? This determines, among other things, the quantity that you spend each period. So these two components of consumption don't depend on your income. We're going to say that's autonomous with respect to income. So consumption has an autonomous part. And then naturally, how much income you earn every period also is very important. And it's disposable income. So income minus taxes. So every dollar of income you earn is a dollar available that you can either spend or save. And we'll say the fraction of each additional dollar that you earn, that you choose to spend, is called the marginal propensity to consume. So our marginal propensity to consume is some number that's less than 1 but greater than 0. It's the fraction of each additional dollar that households choose to spend. Now investment expenditures, this is firm spending on capital goods, machines, equipment, structures, new housing, and inventory. Investment depends a lot on expectations, firm expectations of future profits. Uh, if you're expecting high sales, you're going to buy more inventory, you expand your factories, etc. We assume that this type of investment spending is autonomous, and we're going to say autonomous AI. Now, some firm spending depends on the interest rate. Firms often have to borrow to finance capital expenditures, and if they're not borrowing, then the interest rate is the opportunity cost. So there's a negative relationship between the interest rate and investment. So we're going to add to this determinant here investment as a function of the interest rate. And as the interest rate increases, we should see all else held constant investment decrease. Now, government purchases in this model is easy. The government chooses how much it's going to spend. If they don't have tax revenue, they borrow it. They don't act strategically, so the interest rate isn't important. So government purchases are autonomous. Now, let's think about net exports. Net exports has two components, exports and imports. The exchange rate, relative prices, and foreign income, these sorts of things are going to determine perhaps largely the export component, so we're going to say that's autonomous with respect to income. Part of consumption is imported, so we will need to think about imports in a similar way that we do consumption. So we have some autonomous consumption is autonomously imported, and then each dollar earned, some of that, those dollars are spent on imported goods. The marginal propensity to import is some number that's going to be greater than zero, and it's going to be less than one and has to be less than the marginal propensity to consume. So let's clean this up and take a look here. We are shooting for a negative relationship between real GDP and the interest rate. We have consumption, investment, government purchases, exports, and imports, and we have some component here that's negatively related to the interest rate. Unless you care about deriving the IS curve, go ahead and fast forward to the point where I plot it. But if you'd like to follow along with me, what I'm going to do next is I am going to derive a real GDP as a function 
of all of these autonomous components and the real interest rate. So let's sub in each component as described on the previous slide. Now I am going to collect all of these autonomous terms and distribute all of these terms that depend on real GDP. And I'm going to add on this investment component that's negatively related to the interest rate. I'm going to collect my terms that include y and move them to the left hand side of this equation. I'm going to factor out my y. I'm going to consolidate these two when I rewrite it. And solve for y. And there we go. What we have here is we have real GDP as a negative function of the interest rate. If the interest rate increases, this part here decreases and real GDP decreases. Okay, now I've rewritten it here and cleaned it up so you can have a look at it. Just like we had before, this term right here is sometimes called the fiscal multiplier. This fiscal multiplier should be some number greater than 1. That's because MPC is less than 1 and MPM should be something less than NPC. So that means if we get an increase in, say, government purchases, we should see an increase in real expenditures greater than the increase in autonomous spending. Let's plot this. What we have here is real GDP as a decreasing or negative function of the real interest rate. So let's pick a real interest rate of R0. If we see an increase in the real interest rate, this part of aggregate expenditures will decrease, resulting in a decrease in real GDP. We get a nice negative relationship between real expenditures and the interest rate. That's our IS curve. So changing interest rates moves us along the IS curve. Now let's talk about what might cause the IS curve to shift. Let's look at this equation right here. We see there are a lot of variables other than the interest rate that might influence real expenditures. Are you feeling optimistic? If you're feeling optimistic, you might go shopping. If you go shopping, that's going to be an increase in autonomous consumption. And if we hold the interest rate constant, we should see an increase in real expenditures and the IS curve should shift to the right. Perhaps the government wishes to stimulate the economy and increases infrastructure spending. If the government increases infrastructure spending, holding the interest rate constant, we should also see a rightward shift in the IS curve. And what I want to call your attention to is the size of this shift. The size of the shift in the IS curve is going to be the change in autonomous spending times our fiscal multiplier. So our shift in the IS curve or change in real expenditures holding the interest rate constant should be bigger than the initial shift in autonomous expenditures. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit how we derive the IS curve, which is only half of our ISLM model.